Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today with my good friend, Daryl Eves. From DarylEves.com. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, it's, I it's literally a... took that bit from you. <laughs> it's all good, it's right branding, right? Yeah, absolutely. So today, we have some fantastic tips for small YouTubers because Daryl, if there's anybody that can help <laughs> someone grow from zero and make a big impact on their channel, create awesome things, get them out into the world, this guy can help you do it. You know, and, and two, uh, first off, I want to thank you for having me on your channel. I just really Absolutely. respect the stuff that you do. And one thing I love about Roberto is he's true, he's passionate, he's authentic, and he's the one take wonder. <laughs> Always in one take, right? Always in one take. That's right. But I know a lot of you are actually looking to grow on YouTube and you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to navigate the waters. And the first thing that I look at when somebody comes to me and says, hey, I want to be a YouTuber. I, I want to start this or our channel's not performing. And I'm like, well, what type of content are you creating? What type of influence they actually have? So the first thing that I actually have them do, believe it or not, is go find 25 different channels that are within their niche. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly like it, but it needs to be around the topics like that. So when you started, did you go out and kind of look what was out there and get some ideas? I did and I didn't. My thing was um, just a little different, but I did have people who inspired me. When I started with uh, tutorials, I liked stuff I was seeing from Terry White and oh, yeah, Howard Terry. Pinsky yeah, exactly. and Jared Polin. And so um, I like took inspiration for the fact that I wanted to teach other people too how to do the things that I like and my style. And so I just saw that they were doing Doing that, and more than anything, I looked for them not for how to do it, but to just like more be inspired. Me. Yeah, yeah and, and I think too by watching their content. So like if I watch Jared's stuff and I have a, a fro, then I would fro knows me, right? right. <laughs> but no, seriously, like watching and getting inspired also literally helps you create content. It does so much. And, and it's like, okay, they did this and I could do this. It just brings and out ideas. And decide, well, I want to be different, not a it, me too. Exactly, yeah. not a me too, but you're like, I could improve this and improve that, or I can kind of cross cross through the things that-, that Or that, wow, they do it really differently than I do, and I wonder why, and let <laughs> me like figure that out, because maybe people need to do it this different way, because maybe that's their skill. Absolutely. So that's then the first step is I do is like go see what the competition is, the people that inspire you, make a list, and then literally start watching YouTube videos. Now most of the people that I that, that are making content, they're not watching YouTube videos. And I'm like, you can, if you're gonna be in the industry, number one, you need to watch videos. Would you say and, that part of that is just knowing where the bar is or what the expectation in your Well, niche like is? for the reason why for me, it's like you, you want to see success on YouTube. You want to experience success, but if you don't know what success looks like, how are you able to achieve it? Like how, like I, I know uh, for a fact that Casey Neistat actually follows you and he engages with you. Why is that? And two, you know, we don't need to, that, that's a video for another day. <laughs> but no, but seriously, it's like, it's like the community aspect of YouTube is how you gain success. And, you know, reaching out and connecting with audiences is really important. But two, you need to become an audience member. You need to become a viewer because- We can all learn from each oh, other. Oh, we can. But it's taking these elements from learning from people that are successful, but putting your own spin on it, not a me too, but your own spin. And then two, getting inspiration or they, oh, they had this issue and, you know, I, I, I never want to do that. And it gives you a lot of opportunities to really succeed. Then, now, the next thing is, uh, once you're able to do that, is like, what is your, your channel going to be about? Mm. And if you feel like your channel is going to be a shotgun channel, well, I'm going to do a little bit of this, 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 you will never grow it's on hard. YouTube. No, I, I, I don't even know a channel that exists that has that. We're doing gaming, but we're doing challenges, oh, but then we're also I, doing- yeah, I, I, The only person I've really seen get away with is like iJustine, but she's I, but, I Justine. she's but amazing. But iJustine, it's her, like, it's more about her life than right. anything else. Kind of like so, a vlog yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we sh I, I really consider her like the first vlogger. I, not a I, lot of people do. I agree. You know, she was definitely out there, but but that's where it's at. It's like really identifying the type of content that you're gonna make, you know, what it's gonna look like, but. But two, you need to be hyper localized. You have to be niche specific. So for you, it's all about creation. It doesn't yes. matter creation in InDesign or Photoshop, uh, Photoshop or, or Illustrator or on your camera or with hardware. It doesn't matter. It's about creation and it's the creative process. But two, what I really love and appreciate, it's like you know that it's not just creation because you don't want the artist to starve. Exactly. And so it's the entrepreneurs that like making money while you're doing this too. So it's very clear theme and you can 
have topics and discussions that does both creativity, both uh, workflow, but also making money. And so it kind of all works together. The value together. proposition has to be clear. You can do different things if they still have one large purpose that is like very specific. So Absolutely. I, I definitely agree with you. And, and two, so once you have that, um, this is one that most people don't do, but you should do every single time, oh, so which is, is the big secret? this is the big secret. You actually need to plan. Who would have oh. thunk it? <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Yeah, it's like I sit down and let's say, let's do a whole year plan. Let's figure out every tent pole opportunity, what a tent pole opportunity is, basically times in the year that you know will be big in a specific topic. So let me give you a couple examples of a tent pole opportunity. Oh, please do. Uh, Fourth of July. Back to school. Every season of Game of Thrones. Every season of Game of Thrones, pretty much. Uh, you have football, you have uh, the Super Bowl, you have Christmas. You know, these are temple opportunities, but two, you have things like VidCon. You have mm. things like Playlist Live. You have like CVX Live, you have like Vid Summit. These are yeah. monumental activities that happen every year. And it's a tent pole, so it's identifying those, but also birthdays, anniversaries, anything that affects your life or the lives of others. Now, I'll tell you a tent pole opportunity that I like, and I know that you like too, which is the release of the next Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> we were talking about that a little bit earlier. But those are things that you gotta plan around, and it's like, okay, identify those first, and then second would be, okay, is there an idea or theme that I can do around these temple you know, opportunities and brainstorm on that? And so you have a whole year's plan, but it's, it's a whole year's brainstorm. And then what I like to do is brainstorm all the different things that I could do, all the things I wanna do. If I had unlimited budget and I could do anything I want, I wanna put those ideas down because once you get the ideas flowing, you know, you never know who you're gonna run into to, to facilitate those ideas. Absolutely. Once those are done, then you start to put together your quarterly plan. And the quarterly plan is like, okay, I'm gonna be here, here's the tent pole opportunities, um, and also uh, I, I want this content, and then I look at trending, what's trending, and I'm like, hey, I really like this, or you know, this new camera came out, or whatever it may be, and you start identifying those, and you start putting together how many videos you need to make, and you start creating, like exactly. you say. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I did some videos when I bought my new Panasonic uh, Lumex GH5. Yeah. I was one of the first people People actually get a hold that that didn't and I, get it I sent was, to them. I was really sad when I didn't get mine. I pre-ordered. Pre <laughs> like, like, yeah. But like I did, and then um, I was I wasn't one of the first people to get it, but like I was pretty up there when the Sony RX100 Mark V, yeah. and then like when there was the shortage on the Mavics, I got that, and those things definitely helped because I was in a position to uh, get these newer products. Right. And the thing is, even now, because people didn't get them at first and they saved up and they got them, my content's still relevant to those people. Yeah, and, and that's what I love is like a proper planning and you know it's gonna be coming out and you have a good idea of when it's gonna come out so you're like ready to take the moment that's there. But the, the reality is, is there's people that are watching your content that, that aren't over tech or anything like that. They might be in gaming or they might be vlogging. They're like, well, this isn't relevant to us, but it is. Like, even vloggers, it's like you can you can plan your life out and it could be activity based. Uh, gamers, like you can literally do a lot of things in gaming, believe it or not, even on temple stuff. Absolutely. And it's just, it's amazing how you do it. It's all about discoverability and and also being relevant because when you're relevant then no, you get you out there. You know what's going on in your niche the same way that professionals know what's going on in their industry. Absolutely. And they make a plan uh, going according to this and so you got to be able to think about it in the same way that people think about a press cycle or yeah. a news cycle. It's like there are no boring days. Somewhere in the world something Something's is happening going on. that yeah. matters to people and, like you. And I think next would be going out and finding communities, forums, uh, Facebook groups. Places for you know, engagement and distribution. Exactly. Especially and it's when like, you're small. Oh, uh, when you're small, it's like where I would spend the bulk of my time. I mean, creating content, yes, but it's like engaging with other communities that are already people established. People care about it, yeah. Exactly, and so that's one thing that, that most people don't consider. And I, like, I like to, to figure out who the administrators are, uh, moderators, I like to contribute value to the community. I know that I have a community and you're a part of that community and he brings a lot of value uh, you know, with, with, with people's comments and stuff. And all it does is it brings us closer together so that we can collaborate, we can do other things that are out there. So by doing that and you're bringing value to those community, that content will either, the community will either inspire you on content to create or uh, things that 
people have a common question on, and that's where you can provide value in your or content. Or they'll be able to give you an idea that it Absolutely. wouldn't have even occurred to you yeah. to go in this direction. You said to yourself, actually, in one of your sessions uh, that I was uh, sitting in on, that community is ultimately the secret of success on YouTube. It is. Even it is. beyond the algorithm, it, but that's the real driver. And I, I'm here to tell you, you got that friends uh, who don't care about the algorithm, I, but they win on community. That's right. Community will win 100% of the time. And what we look at too, even in the most craziest ad campaigns, is creating a community around it. So, uh, if you've ever seen the pooping unicorn ad, uh, you know I was executive producer along with the Harmon brothers. The Harmon brothers and I. It was a Harmon brothers project, but uh, I was uh, lucky enough to work with them. Uh, we've worked on several projects, but we looked for communities with, with unicorns. And we found these subreddits <laughs> that had these, all these amazing communities, and we got a lot of ideas and inspiration for the content. But two, it resonated with them that they wanted to share it. And I don't know, you saw the video. Oh, yeah. More than once. And I do apologize. <laughs> Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> but no, it's good. It's good. But that's what you're looking for is those communities. You get ideas. You bring value to them. And then also you find a way to give back. Uh, you give back first, of, of course. But I don't even think of it as give back so much as give. Yeah, give. No, that's that's the best terminology for it is, is to be a part of the community, be an active member of the community yeah. for sure. So once you have that, you're ready to almost pick up the camera. Because we haven't even picked up the camera at this point. I mean, this is yeah. all planning. This is all preparation. This I think is all everyone understanding. underestimates how yeah. much that's like. The guys, I may do everything in one take, but it's not an accident. No, and two, you've prepped for it too, and so it's like, okay, what I like to do is, okay, what are we going to do in this video? What does it look like? I like to figure out very first off um, some elements, and here's some elements for success, especially for small channels, but also big channels. What type of thumbnail am I going to take? What's going to be the title? What's going to be the hook? Like, how am I going to get? How am I going to draw them in? If I get, even have the most amazing thumbnail, because you can watch Roberto's tips on that. But it's just like pulling them in, and what's that hook that's going to get them to stay? And then what value can I give them so they stay longer and longer and longer? And then what value can I give them to subscribe and watch more content? And if you do that before you actually pick up the camera and you have some ideas and you start brainstorming on some ideas you're more prepared to actually shoot the content that you're actually creating. Now, if it's script driven, yeah, you want to do the scripts and have that brainstorm and you'd also get people to, to uh, uh, give you advice and, and, and feedback, maybe even before you shoot. You know, Absolutely. say, hey, what do you think about that? We talked about that in another video on my channel Which that you, you need to check out. definitely need to see that video. It is killer. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of where you're at. Then you start the production part and the production, uh, the, I think the biggest thing for small channels is make sure you have good sound. You don't need the best camera in the world. You need, don't need to have the best lighting, but sound is everything. I, for me, it's just that. No, I agree. It ruins the whole experience yeah. if it's bad. <laughs> yeah, and then once it's there um, and you shoot your, your content, then it's about really getting the fill of the edit. And we actually talked about that as, as well in the other video, but it's yep. just like really getting that. And then once it's done, um, I don't like to just put it up on YouTube. I want to get some feedback because maybe I could edit it a little bit better. And you know, having that tight knit circle. Facebook that we groups about. are great yeah. for that. But you also brought up uh, Frame.io. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to link that down below if you guys want to check that out. They should check the video out of what we did on my channel. It'll make more sense <laughs> if they do. They'll, they'll put it into context. Oh yeah. But this is, all comes together, and once you're ready. Um, I like to do a series of videos first because you could just make one video; it's fine. But what if you did five? And they and feed off each other. It's they better. do. They feed off each other. And the whole thing about it is, you have a series, and then you're showing them like, "Hey, this is very interesting. I would actually subscribe to this." And if if people would say that, then you know you have something. Now, the biggest thing that most people get is very depressed when they upload it and they have four views, and all four of them come from your mother or people they know, the people they know, or whatever it may yeah. be. But the, the reality is, is that's where what Roberto talks about, just creating, creating, creating. You now have the formula, you know what kind of works, and you're just getting better and better and better. Four years ago, none of you knew who I was. I don't think you knew who Daryl was. And yeah. Like, so, like, you know, that's not an accident, and it meant that we had to keep trucking and keep going no matter how few uh, people it was. In fact, here at these conferences, sometimes they're overlapping sessions. We might have, like, what, 10, 20 people exactly. in a room, and guess what? 10, 20 people show up, we still give them 110%. That's right. Tree falls in the woods and nobody hears it, you still got firewood, you're still building a house. He has a saying for everything. It's your grandma's influence, right? Or is it your mom's? Probably both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But, but anyway, the last tip, and this is the endurance part, uh, you just got to create, 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 
is um, you have a great thumbnail, you have a great title, you have a great hook, you have great content that you go from there and then you're improving as you're creating content would be consistency, 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 consistency of all those things, but consistency of your upload. If you will be patient and take a hundred days and say for a hundred days, I'm going to post three times a week or twice a week or daily, whatever it may be. And you're very consistent at that. Things happen. It's just magic. A it's body just the, of work works for it, you. It does. It's just, there's a lot of things that are happening on YouTube, but two, you're growing slowly the community. Now, how you grow on YouTube will might shock you, but it's this. Okay, wait, here it comes, it, people. It, here it, it comes. It, it is. It's this. When a video pops, that means it gets you more views, your channel grows. It's amazing. And the more consistently you can get your, your, your view count, you'll get more subscribers. So don't worry about subscribers. Yes, say, hey, subscribe. But what you need to do is focus on your content because the content will bring you subscribers. And I'm here to tell you, uh, I've worked with, like you said, in every vertical uh, and, and, and got them over a million subscribers. And it's really, really amazing where at the end of the day, it's about people saying, do you know what, this content's so good, I need to share this with Roberto. He needs to see exactly. it. Exactly. And Roberto gets it. Real. And he's like, dude, I need to share this with, you know, everybody. You know, yeah. Tim Schmoyer or whoever, right? Absolutely. It's like, hey, you need to see this. It's like, this yeah. is insane. I couldn't have imagined, blah, blah, blah. No, that's real. And, and I wanted to loop it back to this. Yeah. And that's why Casey Neistat follows you. Because someone sent it to him. He engaged. He had some questions. And I, I did some social stalking on this. And you, you engaged back with him. And before you know it, Th there that's how rela you know that's in, in real life that's how relationships are generated out of thin air yeah that's real life yeah and the thing you said about videos popping that's really interesting to me because um even even the ones that don't necessarily pop you pointed out that the content the body of work doing something for like 100 days whether yeah. end up producing 30 videos 50 videos 100 videos that gets you subscribers because i see that videos i did even a year ago still they, are getting me subscribers I, sometimes more than stuff that i did i a got week videos ago. like five years old that are still i mean it's just cranking them out it just so, matters it yeah. just adds up it's math it's yeah. compound interest it's like the greatest <laughs> force in the universe according to einstein it's compound okay. interest and two if you've done it for 100 days you can always figure out what's your best performing videos mm. and you might want to make another Another version of that or another addition to working that. on that now i yeah. think you guys see me doing some stuff <laughs> but th that's kind of the secret from there and it's really not it's not rocket science it's it's really getting back down to it and being consistently doing the right things and and always trying to improve along the way and for me what i always like to do is see uh, my earlier work and i'm like oh i was really bad <laughs> And, and realizing, you know, as you're making content, you're evolving as a creator. And as you build a community, you're really making content that more people would actually like. I learned a lot of that as an illustrator growing up and then when the internet was getting new and like we had this thing called deviant art yeah. where I could post my drawings and get feedback and engage and have a community there. That was a huge that, community. That was huge. Yeah. It was so amazing. It was so, it was so different as an artist to actually have people care about my work because I'm 33. I grew up in a world like yeah. pre-internet where you could do all this work, all this creativity that no one, you guys sometimes say like, I get so discouraged because why am I doing this thing and no one's gonna see it. I lived that most of my life because we didn't have yeah. the internet the way we have it today. Yeah, and it, it's it's great. And I think too, it's just being consistent, creating, going after it and, and having fun. You gotta have fun. Yeah, you gotta enjoy it more than anything. You know what? Create an awesome experience for yourself every time you put out the video. If it's becoming a chore, you're probably doing something not great. That's so right. uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Daryl, thank you so much for coming yeah, on the channel and giving it. value. Guys, if you are not subscribed to him yet, which I can't imagine why you wouldn't be, <laughs> then you definitely need to do that. It'll be linked up here. It'll be linked up in the info card. It'll be all the places, all the things. Daryl, again, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Go out there, create something awesome today. Take care. Awesome. All right, let's do <laughs> some poses real quick right. for, the, for potential thumbnails. I like that one. Yeah.